and welcome to the power shed. I built this a couple years ago to house my electronics that was in the basement stairwell. It was a little precarious working on it. So this is a 4x6 shed. It's built better than most homes. It's got Anderson windows. It even has a sun light, sunroof or whatever you want to call it. It's a little different than uh, most solar setups in that it's run on a you know computer and everything that's happening in the house it understands and it directs loads to where they're needed first and any excess is sent off to other things. This allows me to use only a single car battery. Uh, this battery is out of my vehicle that I don't bring with me to camp. We live here off-grid five months a year and uh, we don't really uh, hurt for anything. Wife even has a dishwasher. This is my uh, 36 volt string buck converter. The power point voltage on it is about 52 volts and uh, that takes that voltage down to the 12 volts that the battery needs to charge. It's just a very simple buck converter. Here we have a couple of fat out of a UPS. A uh, little few capacitors. Down here a few more capacitors. And uh, this efficiently uh, it only creates about 200 watts, but I have seen uh, upwards of over 20 amps come out of it. So it, it can produce if it needs to. Here's my uh, water heating control box. There's really not much in it. You know, a few capacitors and a couple FETs. I use fetch just like this out of an old UPS. Uh, I put two in parallel and I have uh, two fetch strings inside, one for water heater number one, one for water heater number two. These don't heat up at all. Again, they're free right out of any old UPS. Here are my two water tanks. This is the primary tank. Uh, it's ten gallons it heats up pretty quickly being so small and then the fill water comes from this 20 gallon tank and I've brought both tanks up to 120 degrees easily on sunny days but uh, we used to have a 10 gallon propane water heater and uh, we never turned it on for years now it's disconnected in storage this provides all the hot water we need for dishes and taking showers. You could do the same thing with any 30-gallon uh, water, hot water heater. They have an upper element that would be equivalent of tank number one. The warm water rises and the lower element uh, heats the feed water coming in. There's a little display and that gives me the daily wattage that uh, goes to the water heater. It's typically around 2,500 watts a day. But like I say, it's just a pretty box. There's nothing complicated about it. This is the brains of everything. Uh, it's kind of ugly, but uh, I started this project to show people that you could have a very effective solar system without spending any money on electronics. All in total I have about fifty dollars and all the electronics in the shed. The inverter is an old Harbor Freight. I picked that up for twenty bucks. It was broken. Uh, it had two FETs in it that were shorted. I just wiggled them out. So it's effectively a thousand watt inverter with a really strong power supply. I run it without any fans and uh, that's fairly efficient. 
the refrigerator takes uh, only about 100 watts to run but uh, it takes 100 over 120 amps from the battery for the initial start current so you need to have a big inverter for that like I say cheap Uh, one of the interesting thing about the buck converter is again I was trying to show people how you can make things cheaply this you know uh, as a PWM frequency of 122 Hertz which I feed into that transformer it's just a power transformer power transformers should really shouldn't be used as inductors because uh, of of the iron core heating so this iron core heats up a little bit but I'm only losing about 5 watts and my uh, panels are a, a little over a thousand watts total. Now anyone can make hot water with even if you have a, a standard charge controller. The secret is storing energy in capacitors. You could buy expensive capacitors like this or you could use these cheap little capacitors that are found in any PC power supply. About 20 in parallel is enough to do the job of heating. And the UNO does simply, it, uh, it's a fixed power point because we're only operating in summer. Uh, MPT, MPPT, uh, everyone thinks it's going to solve all their problems. It really doesn't the main advantage is it takes a higher voltage and drops it down to a lower voltage but it is important to hold your panels at their power point and their power point doesn't vary, vary with light intensity it only varies with the temperature of the panels of course in bright sunlight the panels are going to get hot but really in the summer the difference between cold and warm panels is not that much. Uh, typically when the panels are cold it's early in the morning the voltage will be a little bit higher but you're not producing that much anyway so it doesn't really matter in the whole scheme of things. So what this program does it's fairly simple. It has an up-down counter which uh, operates the PWM of the UNO and what we do is is if the power point voltage rises above the set level the duty cycle increases the count increases and when uh, the voltage starts to drop on the panels we lower the count and that reduces the PWM duty cycle it's fairly simple and you could add this on to uh, any charge controller whether it's uh, MPPT or a PWM. But the thing that people don't realize is that they're going for all this efficiency in charge controllers and then really they waste most of the power that they could have during the day. Uh, the reason is, is once your batteries are charged up and you're not using anything, the potential power coming from the panels is just wasted. And what we do here is we're just harvesting any of the surplus energy and putting that into heating water. And throughout the day, that all adds up. Uh, this charge controller will effectively, you can use, it can take anywhere from like 20 watts up to about 600 watts and put them into the water heaters and like if you had 50 or, or 100 watts that doesn't sound like much but over time it just adds up and as the clouds come and go away this thing just keeps on humming away the refrigerator I use as a chest freezer and I set the temperature to that of about uh, 33 degrees and it's kept pretty close. Uh, this program has time delays in it so you don't get hot starts. And uh, 
what we do is only run it during the day and that allows us to uh, not have the big batteries that other people do. The refrigerator, we have massive amounts of uh, cold water, drinks in it, and that keeps the temperature th down throughout the night. We have uh, a temperature around 39 degrees in the morning, which is what most refrigerators are set at. Again, I was trying to show that you don't really need a large battery bank. Anytime you use a battery, the basically operating cost of a battery is 14 cents per kilowatt hour. And uh, that's as much as the electricity you can buy from the grid. So if you have a battery, you're just wasting money. This battery I have, if I just left it in the car for five months, it would be destroyed. So I still get the average of, you know, four or five years out of a battery. So I'm quite happy. So again, if you have excess energy, heat water with it. Do something with it. And if you can, you know, have a, have a microcontroller system which will control power in your house. I have pumps. I have two charge controllers for the batteries. Everything is controlled through the microprocessor. It knows where the demands are. It knows how much energy is coming in. And it makes all these decisions. And it uses the energy wisely. One last thing to show you is I have this little power strip here. Uh, it looks like any normally normal 120 volt power strip. But what I do is I take the raw solar panel voltage, which is about 52 volts, and most wall wart devices, like I can charge my computer, I can charge my camera batteries, I can charge my phone, they all work fine at about 52 volts. It's a reduced current at that point, but it's still rather adequate for something that's plugged in all day. And the whole trick is that you can operate a house on a really minimal, cheap power supply. And you don't have to buy all that really expensive stuff everyone's trying to sell you. You should have an integrated system and not just a bunch of black boxes connected together. Well, I'll explain more about hot water heating later. Uh, thanks for watching.